Good day, everyone. Welcome to our online class in Introduction to the Philosophy of the Human Person. I'm your teacher, Mrs. Lovely Jimenez Tupel. Our lesson for today is all about philosophical reflection. Today, you're going to realize the value of reflection as important process in philosophy. I want you to reflect in this picture. When was the first time you hear the word GCQ, ECQ, no face mask, no quarantine pass, no entry? You still remember last March 2020 when everything changed? Suddenly, you can't go wherever you want. Then, we realize that the most important things in this world are the things we taken for granted, like our loved ones, our freedom, and our health. In the midst of our present crisis, the COVID-19 pandemic, consistently the government kept on reminding us the essentials of things and concerns that are necessary during the quarantine period, whether under ECQ, GCQ, or MECQ. In our case, in education, we change our competencies and emphasize the most essential ones. This is the essence of philosophy. It tries to separate the essence of things versus accidentals and necessary versus contingent. It is concerned of what is the substance and ultimate causes of things. Let us define the word reflection. It is the process that would aid in understanding the holistic point of view of what is going on around us. According to Abelia, it is an activity that requires a person to examine his or her thoughts, feelings, and action, and learn from experience. When we venture into philosophizing, we see the greater perspective of all things and see the ultimate purpose or reason for our existence. Most of us are so engrossed with individual trees and we miss the whole forest as the saying goes. We are always predisposed to attend to the details of the problem rather than look at the situation as a whole. This is true in our understanding of the objects, events, realities, and situations around us. As we define the word reflection, let us study what is philosophical reflection. This is the process of seeing the bigger picture about everything. According to Gabriel Marcel, philosophical reflection is the act of giving time to think about the meaning and purpose of life. Philosophers always search for the essence of things and the ultimate reasons for our existence. Did you know that there are two types of reflection? First is primary reflection. This is the ability to think logically. The ability of the mind to construct and evaluate arguments. Example, how shall I use these dangling hands, this fit of mind that drew me on like dreams? It examines its object by abstraction, by analytically breaking it down into its constituent parts. It is concerned with definitions, essence, and technical solutions to problems. On the other hand, secondary reflection enables us to look deeper into our experiences and see the bigger picture of reality. Example, what would you do if fear was not a factor and you could not fail? It integrates the fragmented and compartmentalized experience into a whole. It is the idea that various systems should be viewed as wholes, not merely as a collection of parts. Reflection is not exclusive for philosophy. In fact, it is employed in any endeavor, research, or disciplines. In research, it is called methodological approach. Moral theology employs the stop sign as guidepost of moral decision making. S stands for search, search out the facts. It is necessary that all means should be exhausted to better understand the issue. T is for think, reflect, and analyze the facts, its negative or positive effects, advantages, or disadvantages. O, how it affects others. 
We should always consider others in every decision that we make. Every action that we take has always a social dimension. It affects ourselves, others, and community where we belong. Lastly, P stands for pray. We are human beings with limitations. If our best efforts are not enough, then there is no way but look up for divine or God for enlightenment and guidance. Because praying is a unique tool of theology which is the realm of faith but philosophy's reasoning helps in undergoing a theological reflection. Reason is also important in theology, not just faith. Whether in philosophy, sociology, or other sciences, reflection is very useful in understanding our daily experiences to broaden our perspective of life. In order to reflect philosophically, we need to use a framework. A framework is a conceptual map consisting of our views and beliefs which affect the way we view the world, according to Abelia. The framework we're going to use is called ACAL. It is an acronym that stands for All Quadrants, All Levels, first formulated by an American philosopher or psychologist, Ken Wolver. Wolver first introduced ACAL to the world in his book, Sex, Ecology, and Spirituality. According to Wolver, everything can be analyzed using a vertical line. The line above divides space into two sides, left and right. The left side represents the interior subjective aspect of everything. The right side represents the exterior objective aspect of everything. The interior, or loob in Filipino, if applied to human beings, includes one's values, dreams, ideas, emotions, and beliefs. It pertains of one's inner life. It cannot be seen or measured but can be experienced directly. The exterior side of everything are the things that we can see, measure, and touch. They include the physical objects around us including our own bodies. A simple example of this inside-outside distinction is when a person smiles at you. You see the big smile, so it is the exterior aspect of an event. But at the same time, there is a subjective meaning behind that smile. Let's say the person is happy. This is the interior subjective aspect of the event. So, you see, two strands are interwoven behind any human event. The objective and the subjective. The interior and the exterior. Another basic distinction is using a horizontal line that divides space into above and below. Above the line represents what is singular, individual one. The space below represents what is plural, collective, many. For example, you are an individual but you belong in a family, community, class, all instances of the collective. When we combine the two lines, there is an interesting thing happen. We created what Wilbur calls the quadrants. According to Wilbur, quadrants are the inside and outside of the individual and collective. There are many ways to describe the quadrants. We can use the simple location of each of the quadrants. So, the interior of the individual is the upper left quadrant. The exterior of the individual is the upper right quadrant. The interior of the collective is the lower left quadrant and the exterior of the collective is the lower right quadrant. We can also use pronouns to label the quadrant as shown below. I, it, we, its. Quadrants expressed in language. But what we are interested in is when we apply this to human beings. The inside of the individual becomes the mind. The outside of the individual becomes the body. The inside of the collective becomes culture, and the outside of the collective becomes society. Now, when we reflect on the nature of any concrete issue like poverty, corruption, prostitution, global warming, we can just put the issue at the center of the quadrant and analyze its mental as the subjective, physical as the objective, cultural as the intersubjective, and social components as the interobjective. 
This is looking at an issue from an all-quadrant, multiple, and holistic perspective. Let us take, for example, the issue of poverty. How do we reflect on the issue using the ACL framework? Well, we know that poverty has a psychological aspect to it. It affects the way we think, feel, and even what we value, like self-pity. But it does not stop there. Poverty also affects our body, the upper right quadrant. It affects our nutrition, our medication, and immune system. Some children have stunted growth due to poverty or suffer malnutrition. And who could deny that poverty also affects the culture, such as arts, religion, and even the way we dress. Religious feasts such as the procession of the Black Nazarene is in part motivated by poverty. And of course, it is obvious that poverty has an economic, political, and even technological components. This is the all parts of the social lower right quadrant, which is inflation. Having knowledge about ACL framework, your next activity is you are going to do a quadratic analysis on COVID-19 pandemic using the diagram below. COVID-19 pandemic is already written at the center of the quadrant. All you have to do in the upper left quadrant in the subjective part, you are going to identify the effect of this pandemic, the way you think, feel, and what you value. At the upper right quadrant, the objective part, you're going to find out what is the effect of this pandemic in your body. In the lower left quadrant, you're going to identify how this pandemic affects the cultural aspect of life such as arts, religion, and the like. Lastly, in the lower right quadrant, you're going to identify the effects of this pandemic in economy, politics, and even technological components and other components of social lower right quadrant. Now class, I want you to remember the quotation from Wilhelm I. Philosophical reflection could not leave the relation of mind and spirit in the obscurity which had satisfied the needs of the naive consciousness. Once again, thank you and God bless us all.